Okay, welcome to Battle of the Bulge Day by Day. In honor of the uh, anniversary of the battle, we're going to be going through Shenandoah Studios' uh, Battle of the Bulge day by day, posting one video a day, and uh, playing through from both sides. So this is Jeff Doherty playing against Monty the AI, and I'm going to be discussing Axis strategy for the first day. Okay. So, the Germans appear to have overwhelming force on the first day. But don't let that fool you. They have a lot to get done and are now about as strong as they'll ever be. So the most important thing as a German in the early game is momentum. Your first step is going to be your pre-dawn infantry attacks. Historically, the Germans used these to pave the way for their spearheads. So... The important thing is for you to do the same things here. Now, that was a little disappointing. But essentially what you're trying to do is find places like Losheim, Lealf, there we go, and Dosburg where your infantry can prepare paths for your panzer troops. Because as we'll see in a minute, it's absolutely crucial they move as quickly as possible. Okay, and over to Monty. That's a good move. Now, normally, a good early move is to take the infantry here in Clairvaux and cut the road here at Longville, but it's too late. The Allied armor has already moved up from Beaufort. So instead, we are going to secure saint Vith before Monty can do anything about that. And again, I'm going to choose gaining ground over destruction of allied forces. Starting to pull back to more defensive positions. The allies are very limited in how they can do this on the first day because of the infantry movement restrictions. Okay. Now, my other... The other things that I need to get done today, not want, need, are to get some kind of momentum going here in the north. And that'll do. Let's see what the response is. Not bad. Okay, the other thing I need to do is to put myself in position down here to capture Bastogne. Because there are going to be heavy Allied reinforcements coming in tomorrow here. And ideally, you want to do what the Germans failed to do historically and capture the town before they can get there. So... Since there are no enemy forces on the other side of the river, we can just go ahead and move the panzers across. And I'm having good luck with the time rolls here. Monty passes, not much else to do, and oh, that's a lot of time. Okay, I want to be able to support my drive on Bastogne. So I'm going to go ahead and move the infantry up. This will probably be another pass, but you never know. 
Okay. Now, so as you can see here in the center and around Bastogne, my initial advances are going well. Up here in the north, I have to start making some preparations because there are going to be allied reinforcements around here, and I have to make some decisions. One possible decision is to take this, the 12th SS Panzer here, and move it to essentially bolster the 1st SS Panzer and serve as a second echelon. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is more aggressive. I'm going to attack Elsenborn, and this actually has two objectives. First, uh, if I can destroy an allied infantry division, you know, that's all good. If I can actually punch through to Vervier, I wouldn't mind that either. But what I'm really what I'm really trying to do here is secure the flank of my northern advance by pinning down the allied forces in this sector. In other words, they can't attack into Malmedy and Losheim and Trapont as long as they have to deal with all these troops up here. So, yeah, you usually you usually will not get to destroy the 99th Infantry here. They're a strong unit. They're dug in. And that actually turned out fairly well. Okay, those are the main things that you're trying to get done with the 16th. I have some extra time, so I want to get my Panzer troops back there moving. One thing you have to be very careful of as the Germans in Battle of the Bulge is you cannot let forces fall behind. Your infantry can only move one space per turn. And even your Panzers, every day that they have to use moving towards the front is a day that they're not spending on the front attacking, and they are a scarce resource. So you really want to keep your troops moving, even if that means making some attacks that are less than ideal. The other thing that I want to do is keep the infantry moving because I want 1st SS Panzer to be able to attack, but the rear areas need to be secure. So I, I'm i moving my infantry in anticipation of tomorrow's needs, which is really what you have to do, particularly if you're the Germans. And that's about it, so I will pass. End the day, and that's the end of day one for the Germans. Thanks for watching.